Um, maybe beginning by, by saying two words about JavaScript itself. Why, do, why is there so much attention for, uh, for this functionality? And I think if you are listening to this and you're someone who hasn't used JavaScript and you're afraid of it, uh, first of all, you shouldn't. It's easier than you probably uh, expect. But secondly, it's, I, th I think it is important to realize that if you combine process plans and JavaScript, that you can do just about anything that people ask from you, when it relates to PDF, obviously. Um, And if you look at some of the more advanced examples of preparing files and so on and how that is done, um, we really see always the, the, the two or maybe three same components come back and uh, it's kind of obvious and at the same time not. So uh, process plans as the, the visual uh, flow engine if you want to put things in a certain order and, uh, and, have, and build some logic into it. JavaScript to, um, to do calculations and to do the kinds of um, uh, perhaps more uh, complex logic that you want to do. And then surprisingly also in, uh, in many cases the imposition, and imposition engine, uh, especially when, it, uh, when you start talking about combining or decorating files or deriving one file from another, the imposition engine is something that is used very often in those scenarios as well. And these three things combined are, it's amazing what you can do with that. So if you have not looked at that, I would, I would urge you to, uh, to look at it and see if you can't make sense of it. But let's talk about what, uh, what has changed. I could just show you this presentation and then I'm probably done in, in 10 minutes. Um, I'll try not to do that and show some stuff instead. It's more dangerous, but also more fun. Uh, and I promised I was going to try and make PDF Toolbox 14 crash so we can, we can see how we get along, how we get on with that. If it does crash, it, I'm using an, an intermediate version, so it's not the final version. First, There is a, and I'm actually going to go straight to PDF Toolbox for this uh, and explain uh, there a little bit, but there is a problem that um, you can encounter in, uh, in PDF Toolbox and that is sometimes a little bit difficult to, to solve and there are ways of, um, of getting around that, uh, but now there is a better way to do it. And, uh, so I'll show you a technique that I have used quite a few times. Imagine a situation where you build a process plan, that process plan gets to a certain point, and at that point you determine that there is a problem. And so the only thing you want to do is return a, a, a hit, an error. Yeah? That is something that is in PDF Toolbox 13 and before not that simple because the result of the process plan is not always what you would expect. It is typically the result of the last check. Now, some things in, have changed in PDF Toolbox 14 uh, with regards to that as well. But even in 13, a way to fix that is this very, very um, crazy pre-flight check that says, uh, is the number of pages, if the number of pages in my document is greater than or equal to zero, which essentially is always, because a PDF file always has at least one page, then give a hit. If you have this pre-flight check, uh, you can give it whatever name you want to give it. So um, here my result, it says this is not a good result, Yeah. So, it's a, but you can call it whatever you want. If you use this pre-flight check in a process plan, it generates an error, always, yeah, because of this hit. And so this is a technique that you can use. You can put it in the last stage in your process plan, and then you have a process plan that in a certain branch, for example, always generates a hit. Now, it is a little bit of a, uh, it's a workaround, let's call it that. It's a very clever workaround. It's not very nice. And also the downside of that is that uh, I can't really influence that 
check. It's still a pre-flight check. It will have trigger values. It, it's it's a little bit of a of a, of a clumsy solution. So in um, PDF Toolbox 14, there is a new condition that you can use instead, and you can find it in the uh, in the document group, or you can just search for uh, hit. It's called create a hit or not. Uh, <laughs> which I find a very, very funny name, <laughs> is absolutely correct. <laughs> um, and this is a condition that is completely JavaScript controllable. So it has a checkbox that says, is this going to create a hit or not? And you could, of course, switch that on and then it will always create a hit. But in most situations, it would make sense to put a um, a script variable behind it so that you can control whether it creates a hit or not. And then it also has a trigger value that you optionally can set as well. And the trigger value, if you haven't uh, really looked at that, if you have the results from a pre-flight check, you can uh, open the, the results, the hits that you get, and then somewhere in there it tells you what the trigger values are. And that is normally what causes the hit to, uh, to appear in the first place. Uh, so you can control these two things. And, and that means that in my example here, this is always going to create a hit. Uh, and it's a little bit faster than having to do a real pre-flight check in a way. Of course, this is only one way of using it, but there is a much more interesting way of, uh, of using it, and that is to create your own pre-flight checks. And so let me show you an example of, uh, of that. You have to bear with me because this is a weird position to use a touchpad in. So I have two files here. Um, I have a file that has uh, pages that are all the same size. And then I have a file, uh, which one is it? Uh, this one. I have a file that has uh, four pages, but the fifth page is a different size. And so the question is, can I make a pre-flight check that detects whether the first page has the same size as the last page? I don't care about any of the other pages. I just want to make sure that the first page is the same size as the last page. That doesn't exist. Yeah? Um, I can probably come up with a workarounds on how to do it that involves splitting the file and all kinds of other very complex things. But let's not go there uh, because we're going to end up with a headache. What I can do now is, um, and I, uh, I will actually look at the pre-flight check itself. So I've created a pre-flight check here and I will show you uh, what is in there. So this pre-flight check uses only one condition and the condition is the one that is controlled by um, uh, by JavaScript. And in this case, you can see that the create a hit checkbox has a little script behind it. And then the trigger value also has a little script behind it. So let's see what that uh, is. And we'll look at this one first. And um, I hope that is readable. It's not important to understand all the JavaScript. That's not the point in this case. But essentially what I'm doing is I am looking at the width of the first page. I'm looking at the width of the last page. And then uh, whether the pages are equal is determined by subtracting the two. And then you do uh, the absolute, because otherwise it can be negative or positive. And you say, well, if the difference between the two is smaller than a certain tolerance that I have set, then the pages are the same. And so the result that is uh, generated here is, um, so this one, and why can it not? Oh, this is very nice. I don't have enough pixels here, so uh, bear with me. Let's see whether we can uh, fix this. There we go. So the result that I return to PDF Toolbox is simply whether the pages are equal or, uh, or not. And this determines whether there is a, uh, a hit or, uh, or no hit. Yeah. 
And then in my uh, trigger value, uh, I, I actually do something more here. I also calculate what the actual difference is between uh, the first and the, the last page, and I store that in a variable. And then in my trigger value, this is uh, even simpler. In my trigger value, um, I say the difference between the last and the first page is and then I have this difference in millimeter that I calculated in the, in the other script. So when I uh, pre-flight with that here, come on, tests. So when I pre-flight with that, it tells me the width of the first and last page isn't equal. And then when I look at the trigger values, um, here it shows me that other string that was calculated uh, by JavaScript. So that means that, first of all, I can create the, the hits that is going to be generated with a JavaScript decision. And secondly, I can stuff the, um, the trigger values with things that are useful to me at some further point in the process plan, uh, which can be very, very useful. Okay. No. There. So, very small thing, but still something that, uh, in the context of a process plan, could be uh, very useful, and especially um, the. So the, the 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 exit result of a process plan is a little trick. That's maybe uh, not. That's fantastic. But the fact that you can write a pre-flight check based on something that you can calculate in JavaScript is actually a great thing. Um, and that is something that I could have used in the past in, in a number of uh, uh, projects, actually. Second little point, and I have, um, I'm sorry, there is going to be a lot of swapping between presentation and so on. I have uh, been very careful to uh, not show you as I typed before, at least I, uh, I tried to, but um, let me just uh, use this one and we'll add a, a variable, script variable, please, yes. And now, let's see whether this works if when I'm zoomed in. Uh, one of the cool things here is that, uh, look, that's something that you haven't seen before. So before you could, in the editor, you could, uh, you could type. And uh, if you wanted to insert something from the application context, uh, so something from the document, maybe the number of pages, um, you could go to this uh, uh, I button that gives you information and then you could say insert JavaScript objects and that gave you a list a dialog box with a list of all the objects that you could could insert um, in uh, PDF toolbox 14 you actually get that in the editor itself so I can type app.doc dot and then it shows me all the things that I can get from the document and uh, that means that now I don't have to remember that it is numpages. Uh, it actually uh, shows it to me right there. Yeah? So uh, auto-completion inside of the editor is um, a really nice feature uh, uh, and you don't have to remember, and you don't have to use this dialog box the whole time. There is a shortcut key that now works. It didn't always work. But there is a shortcut key to bring up that dialogue and then you can search and then you can insert it. But that's still like four different things you have to do. This is straight in the editor window uh, where, that, uh, where that functions. And what is important is that it doesn't only, it would be nice if I would know what the shortcut key for this is, but I don't. Um, I'm not going to remember that command return. I'll try it. So what is nice is that it, um, it shows you all of the options. Uh, on the right-hand side, as you could see there as well, it shows you the description that you normally also have in this dialog box. Yeah? So uh, you have all the information that is necessary to determine uh, whether this is what you, uh, what you want or not. Um, and what is also nice, and I, I haven't uh, apparently uh, put it in here, is that it doesn't only work for uh, 
for scripts or in this script environment. There are a few other things where it works, for example, for quick check uh, things as well. So uh, in the built-in editors that you have, this is going to make your life a lot easier. Hopefully. Something else that can, uh, that can make your life easier, and uh, let me, shall I go to, yes, I shall. Command return, right? And meanwhile, trying to remember that. Um, so when I uh, say, go away, yes. So let's uh, see what else we have here. I have one for this particular feature. This is a process plan. In my process plan, I have a fix up. I have a bunch of uh, checks. And then at the very bottom, you can just see that I have a, a script there as well. And it's the script that I'm interested in. So in the scripts, what I want to do is I want to do something with the result object. Now, if you have not used this, this is really, really cool and very useful in, in many situations. When you are in the context of a process plan, for example, and you have a step that generates um, pre-flight results, uh, a check or a profile, that is stored in the JavaScript environment. So uh, under app.doc.result, you have the results of the last thing that was checked in uh, be before you get to this script. And that can be really useful because let's say that I'm looking for uh, images. I have a pre-flight check that detects images. What it would tell me is it, it would give me a list of all the images in the, in the document that qualify for my uh, pre-flight check. It would tell me on which page they are. It would tell me, um, depending on the pre-flight check, some information and trigger results for them. Um, it would tell me the bounding box of those images, and that can be very useful information to, to then do something in scripting. However, there is a little problem if you want to write the JavaScript to interpret, it, to interpret these results. Um, I now have this um, autocomplete, so I can type app.doc.result, and it's going to show me that there is something that is called checks and, and so on, so it, it can show me that, but I have no results. Yeah, I have not run this, uh, this, uh, this, this process plan, and so the results object is empty. PDF Toolbox doesn't know what to put in there, and so I get this, uh, this error message. This is typically what happened in PDF Toolbox 13, and there is a way around that. You could run the pre-flight check once and then open the process plan and edit your uh, uh, script variable and then PDF Toolbox would still remember that uh, you had done that and uh, would show something in the results, but that's kind of annoying. Um, what you will see in PDF Toolbox 14 is when I go down where it says show evaluation results, so in that section where you can see the console and the result of your script, there is now also uh, here I have uh, a section for determining which results I want to see. And so I can uh, check something here and then PDF Toolbox will run this automatically in the background. Yeah. It will uh, provide me with the results that I had. So I don't have to go back and, and force a bunch of stuff before I can edit the script. From within the script editor under uh, show evaluation results, you can choose which results you want to see and then that gets automatically filled in the app.doc.result uh, object. And at least that shows you what kind of information you're going to get. So now you can write a script that really uses this uh, without having to do it blind. Yeah? Uh, I can try something now and I can uh, immediately see whether I get the right, the right information or not. Very small addition, but if you do anything with JavaScript and results, this is a, uh, a serious time uh, saver. You were right. So that's exactly what we just uh, uh, what we just showed. Now. 
After showing you all the, the stuff that is uh, in a way new in this uh, built-in editor, let me show you how you don't have to use the built-in editor anymore. Um, this is the favorite part of the presentation for uh, the person in the room who uh, has this as his feature, this internal editor. Uh, I'm sorry, Vincent. And let me go back to PDF Toolbox again. And this time we're going to use which ones? I don't know. doesn't really matter, I guess, but I had one, yes, it does matter. So um, a, a process plan, um, there are some, it, it doesn't actually matter what it does. The only thing that matters is uh, there are some uh, scripts in there. And so uh, normally when I would edit this, I want some overview for this one, but normally when I would edit this, I would double click it and then uh, it opens in the built-in editor um, where I have uh, learned it. Uh, I can now change the theme and it is actually remembered. So that is also good. Um, but this is the way you edit that. And if you're used to writing JavaScript, then I am sure there will be some of you who feel more comfortable in a different editor. And then hopefully that is Visual Studio Code. Yeah. Uh, because this is the only editor with which this, what I'm going to show now is, uh, is supported. But now I can uh, say uh, edit. And that launches a different session of Visual Studio Code. Um, and it opens my code uh, from my process plan in there. You can see that there is uh, some, um, I don't know how you call that, uh, binding code in there at, at the top. It says do not edit. So I would suggest that we do not edit that part. But the rest of it is, uh, is my code, and I can uh, uh, add some stuff to there. Um, everybody knows what I'm going to type. So that is valid uh, JavaScript. And then I can save that here. And then um, I can go back to PDF Toolbox. And uh, what you can see is that what I typed in my external editor also appears in the um, editor in PDF Toolbox. So uh, what this means is that there is an integration between the uh, JavaScript editor in uh, PDF Toolbox itself and Visual Studio Code. And this works only with Visual Studio Code. And the reason for that is that, first of all, it is I, the best editor that you have today. That is a very subjective opinion, but anyway. And it's also really great in uh, allowing it to be integrated into other things. And so um, uh, the first time that you try this, you will get a warning dialog that will tell you that this only works with Visual Studio Code. It will also tell you that there are some prerequisites for to make this work. Yeah. Um, of course, Visual Studio Code needs to be installed because otherwise you're going to have a problem. But you also need to have the command line tools from Visual Studio Code installed. And there it depends a little bit on uh, what platform you are on. Uh, I believe that on Windows it happens automatically and it's automatically okay. On Mac you have to do some additional uh, preparation work. The dialog box has a link. The link will take you to the documentation where it will tell you what needs to be done. Uh, what is, of course, also the case is that uh, when I go back here and I say cancel or OK or whatever, so when I close this context, then I also, uh, of course, break the connection with the file that was open here. So Visual Studio Code has as one of its properties that is actually quite nice often because uh, very often you close or, or delete the wrong things. It keeps it open anyway, so I could do save as and save it somewhere else. Uh, but it shows you at the top that that file has been deleted and that's because I closed it on the PDF toolbox side. So there is a, a synchronization in, in, uh, in, in two directions if you want. Um, 
that happens there. So let me quit that and then Yeah, so uh, once again, uh, there are some requirements. You can get them from the dialog box or you can just go to help.calasoftware.com. There are some articles about uh, JavaScript and the JavaScript editor that are new um, um, and have been published, I believe. Um, those explain about this integration. They also have the requirements for Visual Studio Code where you can download it and uh, which articles you should read to make sure that on each platform you do what is required. And then, and, and yes, so uh, important, it's the same as for autocomplete, important is that of course it doesn't only work for uh, the script that I showed here, it works for almost everything except, as you can see, for imposition run lists. So we have something to expect in an upcoming version of, uh, of PDF Toolbox there. But for all other contexts where you have uh, JavaScript, um, uh, you're able to use this, uh, this integration. Now, uh, there is something else about this process plan that is uh, maybe interesting, and that is I have this little script at the top, and I have a uh, little uh, script somewhere uh, lower down as well, if I am not mistaken, or maybe not. Uh, here, no, this one, yes. Um, thank you. So I should look at that one. It's much bigger than my screen. Um, the um, the problem with that, uh, if you've tried that, is uh, if I edit this script. So let me just open that. Um, I have a script here. I do some things. But what I'm actually doing is I'm reusing some variables that I've calculated in the first script. And in process plans, uh, you can have as many scripts as you want, as many steps as you want. And um, of course, if you start sending information from one script to the other, what you end up doing is closing one script and going back to look at how you named that variable in the other script and then going back to the second one. And so there is a lot of, of back and forth going on for more complex process plans. And that is not always so, uh, so nice. If you look at the process plan editor now, there is yet another button at the, at the bottom that has appeared. Uh, at some point, it's going to run out of space. Um, but there is a button now that says edit scripts. And that sounds very interesting. So why don't we go ahead and, uh, and click? There. And I'm just going to get rid of this. So what has happened now? Um, again, it opened Visual Studio Code. That shouldn't surprise us. It's the same as what we've seen before. But instead of just opening the script that I was editing, it now looked at the process plan, the whole process plan, and looked at which are the things with JavaScript in there that are um, in this process plan. And you can see them all on the left. So I have two scripts in this particular process plan. Well, those two scripts appear on the left-hand side, and that means that I can switch between both of them, and I can still do what I did before. Um, well, I could, for example, say uh, I'm not happy there. And then when I save, this is still synchronized with PDF Toolbox. So. Uh, every time you save in the external editor, it is going to be synchronized with uh, what happens in PDF Toolbox, and you can uh, test your uh, process plan and see what the result now is, and so on. Yeah? So you don't have to go double-clicking things anymore, uh, and uh, you, have, you can just switch between, uh, between scripts as well. You don't even have to Yeah, so if I, uh, but I'm so used to change, to saving, <laughs> but if I click test, if I remember correctly, it, it looks at the changes uh, automatically as well, right? Yeah. yeah. So just to make sure that also the people who are not here heard that, um, 
here, heard that, yes, that's correct. Um, I don't even have to save my changes in Visual Studio Code. When I do something in PDF Toolbox that requires the, the latest version of the scripts, then PDF Toolbox will um, uh, automatically get that from Visual Studio Code. Yeah? So I can just type, uh, come back to PDF Toolbox, hit test, for example, and that will get the latest updates of the, uh, of the code. Do I need to leave test mode, or does it also work when in test mode you hit test again? Uh, that's brilliant. <laughs> so you can just go to test mode once, and then you have this in the background. You have your scripts open, and you keep clipping, clicking text and, until you found all the bugs that you introduced. Yeah, so again, if you want to uh, if you want to edit in uh, in a different editor, then you can do that. Um, it, it, it actually opens a uh, a new instance of Visual Studio Code, so you might already have Visual Studio Code open with something else. This will open a new uh, instance of the application and then let you edit uh, those those scripts. That was it. Uh, 